In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate my method of stiffening snowflakes. Most of the snowflakes I design are designed to be stiffened so that they hold their shape once complete. Without stiffening, they're really floppy. They're not often odd shapes, um, but once they're stiffened, they hold their shape nicely and make fantastic ornaments. So we need to gather up our materials. The first thing we need is some stiffening liquid. I like to use Eileen's Fabric Stiffener and Draping Liquid. I'm not sponsored by them. I just have used this for a long time. And this is what I use for my particular method. We will also need a couple of clean containers. I use some old cottage cheese and Cool Whip containers, something to stir with. We will be putting some water in there too. We also need a snowflake blocking template. I have two of these available on my website, one with four circles for pinning four small to medium sized snowflakes, and one with two circles for pinning to larger snowflakes. Then we need something to put the pins in. Um, so I use my blocking boards. You can use any kind of foam blocks or mats or a cardboard or anything that will hold a pin when you stick it in there. Uh, pins are also needed. I recommend using rust proof pins so that you don't get rust on your nice white snowflakes if you make them in white. Uh, I also recommend using either T-pins or pins with little heads on top so that you can get a better grip on them without hurting your fingers. Then we need something to keep the template, the pinning template dry. Either plastic wrap or wax paper will both work. I've tried them both. I generally use plastic wrap because I wrap up my templates and then I can keep them. I've had these templates wrapped in their plastic wrap, same plastic wrap for probably two or three years now. Um, and the templates are a little bit runny and pinned up, but they still work just fine. So they can be reused. I, you may also want to protect your work surface. This is not particularly messy, but I get drops of stiffener on my table sometimes if I don't. So here is a drop cloth that I use, and it's handy to have a few towels around to dry and wipe your hands on while you're working. And most importantly, we need some snowflakes to stiffen. I usually wait until I have a big pile like this to stiffen them, and then do them all at once to get it done with. You can, of course, do as many or as few as you like. You just need the right number of templates and pins to do however many you have. In this video, I will be demonstrating four specific snowflakes because I have a couple of different techniques and details I want to point out in them. Okay, I have protected my table with my drop cloth. I have filled up two of my water containers, the larger ones, with water. And in my third container, I have diluted my stiffening liquid slightly. I like to dilute it with somewhere between one to one water to stiffening liquid to two parts stiffening liquid, one part water. Uh, honestly, it depends on my mood and how stiff I feel like I want my snowflakes that day. Um, you may want to play around with the ratio that you like and find what works for you. I dilute mine a bit more because I find I get warping if I don't when they dry. They tend to bubble up. It may be due to my climate. It's very dry here. All right, now I'm going to set this to the side and we're going to get our blocking template ready. So with the blocking template, I'm going to take some plastic wrap and cover it completely. Actually, I'm probably going to turn it this way so that I can actually wrap the plastic wrap all the way around because it makes it easier for me to reuse it later. So I've 
wrapped the template in plastic wrap. I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit so we don't have any wrinkles. And I'm actually going to turn it over and fold up the other sides. This isn't actually necessary for, the folding it over isn't actually necessary for this particular blocking, but it does enable me to save it for later, which I like to do so that I am not using lots and lots of plastic wrap, because I do make a lot of snowflakes. All right, once I have it all wrapped up, I put it on my board and put some pins in it so that it stays where I want it to. One last thing before we get started on our actual blocking, I recommend checking your area for lint. You don't want to have little bits of red fuzz stuck all over your snowflakes. Okay, to get started with blocking, usually I start by actually sticking all of my snowflakes in my first clean water container. This gets them pretty wet and ready the way that I like. Then we take the first one that we want to block, take it out of the water container, and then squeeze it out a little bit. Then we're going to dip it into this stiffening solution and make sure it is thoroughly saturated. You want solution all the way through inside of the snowflake. Once you've got it fully saturated, we're going to squeeze all the excess out so that it's not dripping anything. Then I generally use my third bucket to kind of keep holding it in that little squish ball and I rinse off the outside. This gets all the extra stiffening solution off of my hands and extras off of the bits of the snowflake so that you don't end up with little bits of stiffener um, attached to it on the when it dries. All right, then we take the blocking template and we're going to start straightening out all the little bobbles and picos and petals that are on this snowflake. This snowflake is Nymphedalia. It's a free one that is available on my blog. There'll be a link in the description to this snowflake and all the other ones that I show you today. Right, so I take quite a bit of time usually to kind of straighten out all of these little petals and bobbles, make sure that nothing's curled up or twisted, stitches are straight, and everything is all shaped the way that we want it to be. Makes it a little easier once you go pin it out if it's already not all curled up and twisted on there. I've dropped a little bit of stiffener on here, so I'm going to wipe it down and spread it out, the snowflake on the pinning board. Now I'm going to adjust the camera in closer so you can see the method that I use for pinning. Now that we've got all of our little peacoats and baubles and petals laid out flat, I like to start pinning my snowflake by getting one pin right in the very center. I will actually remove this later, but it gives me a good anchor point to start getting it pinned out evenly. Then we're going to go and start pinning the very points to begin. I use these little circle guidelines to make sure I get the each point to about the same distance. It's never going to be perfect, and that's okay. Real life snowflakes aren't either, so don't be too hard on yourself. But once you have one side pinned, I usually switch and immediately do the opposite side, or I try to when I remember. Then we're going to go around and just pin out all the points, alternating sides, one side then the other, um, to work on getting the tension nice and even. I 
like to have a little bit of tension on my snowflake, but not too much because I don't want the stitches to stretch out. We just want enough tension on there that it will um, dry properly and everything will be stretched out evenly, but not so much that that you get really open, exaggerated stitches and lose some of the um, nice solid bobbles. After we've got the points pinned out, I'm going to go through and pin out these little side bobbles. They can be a little tricky to pin because they want to curl up sometimes. So I try to get them kind of on the edge. Right there's probably good. And I'll start working around and again using the guide to try and get them all to approximately the same spot. Sometimes when I'm pinning out little bobbles or petals or parts like this, I will actually pin it, let it dry for a bit, and then remove the pins that go through the sides of the bobbles. Not the ones in the points where they're in a nice chain space, but when they're kind of going through a piece, if you leave the pin in, it can leave a little gap in your snowflake, a little pinhole, which isn't that big of a deal. Honestly, no one will notice it, but I notice it. So sometimes I remove those before they're fully dry, and usually that takes care of it. You often don't even have to let it dry all that much before you can remove those pins. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep having to clear my throat. I've got a little cough. So I've got almost all the peacocks and the bobbles pinned out. This one wants to twist real hard. When I have one like that, sometimes I even pin it with two pins. We'll do one here, one there. And again, it depends on how precise you want to be. Don't have to, but the more pins you have, the more you can force it to be exactly the way you want. I'll put an extra one there. Then we can go through and do the same thing with these little side picots or petals, I think I call them in this pattern. Those ones aren't really peacoats. And this one, and this one. Now this is probably actually plenty of pins, but if you really, really want to make sure it's exactly the way you want it, you could also go through and pin out these little long double crochet picots, or you could pin out these two sides. Sometimes they curl. You could even open up the little top there a bit. That looks nice. I think I will do that. But this is all down to personal preference on how much each of these little pit pieces being exactly where you want them is going to bug you and how you like your snowflake to look. Everybody likes them a little bit different. So I'm going to open up these sides, giving it just a little bit of split on the top. And then when I'm done, I almost always remove that very center pin. Sometimes you can leave it in and that will help with any, um, occasionally when snowflakes dry, they will start to pop up in the middle. So leaving in the pin in the middle will help prevent that and keep it a little flatter. But it also tends to leave a tiny little pin hole. So I'm going to leave that one and start working on the next snowflake. Okay, this next snowflake I'm going to show you is Nutmeg. It is from my one of my previous crochet alongs. It is a paid pattern. It's available on my Etsy shop and my Ravelry shop in an ebook with about 12 other snowflake patterns. And I picked it because it looks very different when it is completed to when it is 
thinned out and stiffened. It's one of those that changes quite a bit. And the shape was designed intentionally um, with pinning in mind. So you can see that when it is just completed, it, it's got a lot of straight lines, kind of funky little bits, but we're going to make these into nice curved areas. So just like the other one, I'm going to start with a pin right in the center, and then I'm going to start pinning out the very points all around. But for this one, I'm not going to add any tension because I'm going to go in and round this section and this section out afterwards so I don't want to stretch it out too much and not be able to do that. So we'll add a pin right through the chain space there and at the top. And then just like before we're going to go around pinning one side and then the other I'm taking extra care on this one to get the pins in about the same spot on either side since I don't have the tension of the snowflake itself to guide me. Okay, now I'm going to start pinning out the little opening curves. I'm going to do this by actually putting a pin right between this opening and this one to give me a guide to work on. I'm going to place it just below the little gray line and I'm going to go around and do that on all edges. Since I'm not adding tension, it doesn't matter if I alternate sides, so I'm just going around in a circle. Right there. Right there. Okay, one of the methods I use to get these little curved bits is we'll take two pins and I'm going to kind of place it sideways to hold down both of these um, stitch and chain so that it's right open into a nice little loop. We can go around and do that for all of them, placing the pins pretty far sideways. This time I am going to keep switching sides because I am producing, adding tension to the snowflake. Make sure that they're not overlapping with each other. And it's going to end up with a lot of pins. And again, this is optional and the way you decide to do it. But this is how I like to pin mine out get you know, just that exact shape I was going for. Okay, now that all the center openings are done, I'm going to go through and do all the top openings. So again, we'll place the pins pretty far slanted. And I'll try to make sure to get them in about the same place. About right there. Oh, that one's a little bit not slanted. The reason to put them slanted is to hold both, both the two loops down. They, um, <clears throat> since there's two, if you have it straight up and down, they tend to stack on top of each other. And then you don't have a nice flat snowflake anymore. This is getting to be a bit of a maze of pins. So we'll probably check right after we finish and make sure we got all the sides. Okay, we have all the sides done. 
Now I've realized that the tension I put on the um, top pins probably could be increased. So I'm actually going to go through and remove the pins that I put between these two openings just to make it a little easier to see and deal with all the pins in there and to uh, allow me to adjust it a bit more. So I'm going to move the first pins that I put in all the way around the edge out just a tiny bit just to produce a little more tension on each edge. And one more. Oh, nope, two more. Then you'll notice we still have these loose bits here. So I'm going to start pinning those out too, starting with the points. I don't want them to be sticking as far out as the other ones, so I'll put it a little bit further down. We've got enough pins on it at this point that it really doesn't matter if we alternate anymore. You can, but that center's not moving. So whatever feels more comfortable. Notice I'm often putting one finger down to kind of hold the whole thing flat as I pin to help it just ease it into place. All right, to clean it up, I'm going to take out that middle pin. And now I want to shape these little side bits here of them a bit more. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the loops and put a pin really sideways just to get that shape exactly where I want it. Push together, nice open curved loop. Go all the way around. Kind of pressing, making sure that I didn't roll my little, um, there's a bunch of single crochets over a chain space on some of these. I'm going to make sure I'm not rolling those and flipping them over, getting them just where I want. spot right there. Okay, there's a lot of pins in this now. And if you want, this is also a good place to stop on this one. I'm going to go through and double check that I don't have my single crochets rolled by pressing them down a little bit extra. And then since I'm demonstrating, I'm also going to open up these loops up top because I like this particular snowflake to have lots of little, lots of little loopy, curvy, circly bits. That's how I designed it, and you can pin it out differently if you'd like. That's totally up to you and won't hurt my feelings, don't worry. Um, but this is how I want mine to look. So I'm just putting an extra pin on either side of each loop on the top. It's a bit excessive in the pinning, but it has a really nice curved shape when it's done, or at least a diamond triangle shape, which is sometimes just as good too. Okay, so all the pins are in place now. I've got everything loop opened up and it's ready to go dry. This is a snowflake that if I remember in about a half an hour to an hour, depending on how dry it is, I may go through and remove all the pins that are holding down these loops open. Then what I'll do is I'll use my fingers to just push down these edges a little bit and kind of curve them a touch. When it's partially dry, you can still mold it just a little bit 
and it will prevent it from looking too angular where the pins are. Sometimes you get little diamonds, and that's what you want. But sometimes if you want circles, you can remove the pins and manipulate it just a little bit more, and it'll hold its shape and look nice and rounded. Okay, now I'm going to get out our last two snowflakes to show you how I'm going to pin those. If you're watching this when it comes out, these next two snowflakes are a bit of a sneak preview. They come from my new set, the 2013 Snowfall Cal, a rainbow. Um, and for this set, I've designed the snowflakes a little bit smaller than I usually do with the intention of then you can also make them in the Katona cotton, a, a fingering weight cotton yarn. I thought this would be fun, a little different, and they're a little bit chunkier, um, which some of the ones I have from my great grandma are as well, and I wanted to emulate that. So this is the Parakeet Snowflake, and when the cowl comes out, it will be available for free on my blog. And I'm going to show you how to pin this one. It can be a really simple one to pin. It also can be um, one where you play around with how you pin it out, and it'll look different on how you pin it, depending on how you pin it. Um, also, using the Katona yarn, it we use pretty much the same technique as before. You may want to up your ratio of stiffener to water just a little bit because the yarn is so heavy, it needs a little bit of extra oomph to stiff, stiffen it strong enough to hold it up. So I'm gonna start with the thread version of the snowflake. And again, put a pin right in the middle. And the way I've been pinning this one's very simple. I just put one pin on each point smooth out all these little um, picots all, all along the way, alternate the sides, put one there, and there, and one on the other side. Then I'll go through and pin the very long chain loops, put one Right there. There and one more here and one more across the way. So all you have to do to pin that one out if you want is just simple like that. But you can also play with a bit. So with the Katona one, I'm going to start by pinning it just the way I did before, putting a little less tension on all of my points because I think I'll make them into loops instead of just straight up sticking out bits. That's something you'll find is sometimes with the tension, one of my little bits is a little longer than the others. And so the rest either need to stretch a bit, and that one just doesn't need as much stretching. Um, or perhaps the issue is that the other ones are shorter. Now that I think of it, because the rest do seem to be a bit longer. So I've got one pin in each point. Make sure these aren't twisted. And I'll put one in each big long chain loop. And I will adjust these so I haven't gotten them right all in the same space. But again, you know, real life snowflakes aren't perfectly symmetrical either. None of mine are. That's just the way it goes and that's okay. All right, so again, I could just leave it like this or we could have fun, play with it a bit. And I thought for this one, I'll open up these just a tiny bit. Just gives it a different look. This is one of the ways you can use the same pattern to get some variety and make sure that all your snowflakes don't look the same. Which I think this one looks really pretty opened up. You 
could also do some funny things if you wanted with those big long chain loops. You could make them squiggles. You could loop them open too. I may do that. We'll see if I have room after I've opened these up. But there's lots of fun ways to change the way you pin out your snowflakes and um, get more variety. So there we go with that one pinned out as loops instead of just straight up and down. I think I'll leave these together for this one. But maybe we'll go back to the yarn, the thread one, and just open up these point, these long loops on this one a bit. Just to show one more way to do it. That looks nice too. One more here. <clears throat> okay. And there are both of those two snowflakes pinned in. I'm going to remove the center one like I normally do. And now I'm going to probably go through the rest of my big pile of snowflakes and let them all dry. Once you've got them all laid out and drying, you can just leave them under a fan or just out in the open, depending on your weather. They can dry really quick or a little slow. The yarn ones will definitely dry slower than the thread ones. And once they're done, you um, remove all the pins and hang them up and they make beautiful ornaments. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that this was a helpful de demonstration of one way that you can stiffen your snowflakes. If you liked it, please take a moment to, to subscribe to my video channel. It really helps me out and like it. You can also check out all of my snowflake patterns and other patterns on my website, jessicawifel.com. I will have links to the patterns featured in this video as well as my other snowflake patterns and to the snowflake pinning templates uh, down in the video description. Thank you very much.